All right, folks, in this session, I've got something really cool to show you that I think on its face seems simple, but when you combine this with the uh, sideways flips exercise I gave you, starts to open the door to something really deep and, and excellent. So for those of you who are still at the sort of intermediate level, I feel like the, this is going to give you something simple to work on, just another trick to work on. And for those of you who are maybe knocking at the slightly more advanced level, I think there's something a little bit deep here. So I, I'm really looking forward to showing it to you. Let's get into it. Okay, here's the part you already know. You know that if you've got up tilt on the camera, then when you input roll, you also get some yaw. And you, when you input yaw, you also get some roll. Okay, anytime you're pitched forward, actually, that happens, but it's accentuated when you have up tilt on your camera because you're pitched forward a lot more when you're flying. So I'm going to show you a pure roll move right now, and I want you to watch what's in the center of the screen when the camera rolls and watch what the camera does as it rolls around. Well, that happened pretty fast. Let's slow it down, and let's also put a crosshair in the middle of the screen to help you track what's in the center of the screen as the camera rolls. And what I want you to see here as we play this back again really slowly is that as the copter rolls, the camera does not stay pointed in the same place. Rather, the camera's view angle transcribes a cone as the copter rolls about the, the axis of the frame. And the reason for that is that the camera's up tilt causes its view angle to be offset from the camera's roll axis. So we start the move and we're looking at the sky. As the copter rolls 180 degrees, it ends up looking down at the ground. And this can have an interesting effect if you're doing split S's because it means you enter the split S uh, facing basically level with the horizon and then as you flip over 180 degrees, you skip through a big part of the split S rapidly and you almost go from looking straight forward to looking straight down, depending on how much up tilt you've got. And as we saw in the Maddie Stunts video, uh, the breakdown that I did, it can have all kinds of other unusual effects as we get this weird coupling and, of yaw and roll and, and even pitch uh, into each other because of the camera up tilt. But what if you don't want that? What if you want to just roll around the camera's axis? And there is a way to do that with the sticks. You can manually undo the coupling of yaw and roll that occurs when you've got camera up tilt. And I'm going to show you how to do that. So what just happened there? When you do a normal coordinated turn, you move the yaw and the roll stick the same direction, left or right, in order to keep the horizon at the same angle relative to the camera. Right, That's sort of a 101 thing for coordinating turns. You input yaw and roll in correct proportion to keep the horizon at the desired angle. Or, as we saw in the previous video on doing uh, right angle flips, you can manipulate that relationship to input more or less yaw or roll to cause the horizon to level out or get steeper as you need. Okay, so, okay, that, fine. What we're doing here is we're moving the yaw and the roll stick in the opposite direction of each other, and that causes the pitch angle to remain consistent. In the same way that moving the yaw and the roll stick in the same direction as each other causes the roll angle to remain consistent. So we're coordinating the turn, but we're coordinating it along the pitch axis. Because you have camera up tilt, normally when you roll over, for example, 180 degrees, you go from level with the horizon to angle downwards, say 45 degrees, if that's how much up tilt you've got relative to the horizon. But by cross-coordinating yaw with roll, you keep the horizon level, or more or less level, depending on how good of a job you do of it. And that allows you to roll around the camera's axis rather than around the frame's axis. So let's put this crosshair back and let's watch this move again at 25% speed. And let's look at 
where the crosshair stays pointed during the move. Does the crosshair roll over and point down at the ground, or does it stay pointed more or less in the same place? Well, you can see I didn't do a perfect job at that. The crosshair didn't stay pointed exactly at the same place. In fact, the copter pitched forward just a little bit during this move, but more or less the crosshair stayed pointed exactly at the same place. So I was able to roll over around the camera's axis as opposed to the frame's axis. And I'm gonna show you some more examples and you'll be able to see that the relative amount of yaw that I mix into this move affects how much of the camera's up tilt I'm essentially undoing. So I can put a pure roll move in and I can have the full effect of the camera's up tilt or I can mix in a little bit or a lot of yaw to cause myself to have more or less change in the camera's apparent pitch as I do the roll. Now, as you've been watching these examples, you may see that depending on how cleanly I execute the move, I may get a little bit of yaw drift at the end of the move where I don't quite stop inputting yaw at the same time as I stop inputting roll. The moves may be a little sloppy. Now, to some degree, that's a matter of practice, but the good news is that Betaflight, and I think just Betaflight, I don't know if this is in CleanFlight 1.12, but maybe CleanFlight also, has a parameter that will allow you to enter the degrees of camera up tilt that you've got and and beta flight will automatically input the correct amount of yaw to cross coordinate that and cause the copter to roll around the camera angle instead of the frame angle the parameter is roll yaw cam mix degrees and you set that equal to the degrees of camera up tilt that you've got. And then when you input roll, the copter automatically inputs enough yaw to cause the copter to roll around the camera angle instead of the frame angle. But you, you can play with that, sure. But I also really encourage you to play with just doing this manually with the sticks. Because here's where I think things get pretty deep. We saw in the right angle flips exercise that instead of using right roll to level back out after the flip, we could use left yaw to accomplish the same thing. And now we're seeing that by combining cross-coordinated roll and yaw, we can actually effectively aff affect the pitch axis. So there's this weird coupling of yaw, roll, and pitch that I think that if you worked with it until you got a really intuitive understanding, you could do some crazy and unexpected things uh, and, and really take your flying to the next level. Your acro flying for sure, maybe, maybe not so much racing, but acro flying, you could really take it to the next level. Who knows? You could be the next Maddie Stunts, really blowing people's mind with what you're doing. If you do decide to use this beta flight option Test it out thoroughly. Uh, when you do very fast rolls, your copter may need a lot of yaw input to accomplish what it's trying to accomplish, especially if you have a lot of camera up tilt. And if your copter doesn't have enough yaw input, then basically what will happen is you'll do a snap roll and the copter will get all, all out of sorts and destabilized. The back end may kick out, etc. So set this option up and then do slow rolls and faster rolls and finally do full deflection rolls. And depending on how much yaw authority you've got, what your roll rate is, and how much up tilt you've got, you may or may not be able to fully 
coordinate the rolls to keep the horizon level. So play with that, okay? But be aware it does have some limitations. And by the way, those limitations are the same whether you're doing this manually with the sticks or whether you're doing it with the automatic option. The exact same thing is happening. It's just a question of whether you're doing it with the sticks or whether Clean Flight or Beta Flight is doing it automatically in the background. I'm going to leave you with some split S's that I did over this tree. The first one is a normal split S with pure roll. And I want you to look at that and see how it looks. And then the remaining three after that are using the cross-coordinating technique to cause the copter to act as if the camera had less up tilt than it really does. They don't look great. I'm still feeling this move out. But just look at the difference between the first one and the last three to see some of the potential that this technique has for changing and manipulating the way that your acro moves look. I hope this session has been helpful, educational, heck, maybe even inspiring, huh? Well, we can dream. As always, happy flying.